Good morning, girls and boys, and welcome to another Vinji Kids Bible story where we tell you the Bible story for the week. If you'll remember last week, we talked about Joseph and his brothers and how his brothers did something really terrible and sold him into slavery into Egypt. And we also heard how God used this terrible situation to bring about something really good. Uh, Joseph rises up as a really important person in Egypt, and he saves not only his brothers and his whole family, but he saves the whole land of Egypt from starvation, from hunger. Well, this week, we're going to fast forward quite a ways to the part of the story where a new king, a pharaoh, rises up in Egypt, and he doesn't know the story of Joseph and what he's done for the country of Egypt. And so he sees all these Hebrew people, Joseph's descendants, and he thinks they're a bunch of foreigners who are a big threat to him. And what he does is he puts all of them into slavery and does these terrible things to them, giving them back-breaking work to do, and he even kills many of them. It's a really sad story, and all of them are crying out for justice and crying out for help. And you know what? God hears their cries, and God's going to do something about it. And so that's where we get to this part of the story. This is called the Ten Plagues, where God does enough things to make Pharaoh let his people go. Let's hear the story. Our story for today comes from Archbishop Desmond Tutu's Children of God Storybook Bible. Let my people go. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go. But Pharaoh said, no. So God sent plagues to convince Pharaoh to let the Hebrew people go. First he turned the water into blood. Then he sent frogs and gnats and flies. Then the cattle died, and people and their animals got sores on their skin. There was thunder and hail, and a great cloud of locusts filled the sky, and darkness covered the land for three days. After each plague, Pharaoh agreed to let the Hebrew people go, but then he would harden his heart and say, No. Finally, God wept, because now he had to send the most terrible plague of all. Mark your doors with lamb's blood, God told Moses to tell the Hebrew families. On that dreadful night, death passed through the streets, and in every Egyptian family the firstborn died. The Hebrews called that night Passover because death passed over the Hebrew homes that were marked with lamb's blood and spared their children's lives. Go, be gone, Pharaoh cried as he held the body of his eldest son and the Hebrews quickly left. This is a really sad story, isn't it? A story where people are dying and people are hurting. And if you have questions about this story, that's okay. I have lots of questions like, why was Pharaoh so mean and why did he have such a hard heart? And would God do this? Would God send these terrible plagues on people? And there are lots of adults who wrestle with this these questions, and it's okay to ask those questions, because that's how we grow in our faith. But today, what I'd like to focus on is that this is a story of how God hears cries of people who are hurting, and God does something about it. And the Hebrew people uh, have, for many, many, many years, shared the story of God's deliverance and God's love and God's mercy that got them out of Egypt. And they celebrate that through this wonderful meal called the Passover meal, and they, it is also called the Seder meal, where they gather around tables in their homes and they celebrate what God does in their lives. I know that we have special meals in my family where we celebrate really special occasions that have lots of significance. In my family, we gather around the table at Thanksgiving and we have a special meal with foods that we pretty much only eat on Thanksgiving, like turkey and cranberry sauce and apple pie. And we make special foods that come from my family heritage, like lepsa. I wonder if you guys make lepsa. There are other holidays we celebrate too, like birthdays and Christmas, and we play games, and we open presents, and we put up Christmas lights, and we eat, 
and we eat, and we eat some more, and we eat some more, and by the end of the day, all of us are pretty much exhausted. But what's most important about these special meals is that they connect us to the story of our family and what our family means to us and the love that we share together. And they also connect us to God and what God means to us and the ways God loves us when things are good and even when they aren't so good. And all the things that we have to be thankful for. What are some of the things that you're thankful for that God has done for you? Today's story is a story that has been told year after year after year at a special meal called Passover at tables all around the world to remind Jewish people and all of us how much God loves us and cares for us and hears our cries when we're in trouble and comes to help us. It's also a reminder for us to be thankful for every day we have and to focus on the things that are important in life. This week, your challenge is to think about those special meals in your family that you hold dear and the significance of those meals and what they mean to you. It's also a chance for you to talk about as a family what you're thankful to God for and uh, a chance for you to thank God for all the things that you hold dear. We hope that you have a great time this week with this lesson. We hope maybe you even take time to have a special meal without any big reason to other than to share some time together as a family and spend some time thinking about God and God's love. Remember, our God loves you and cares for you no matter what you're going through. And this week, we hope you get to share in that love in your family.